Hello, everyone, and welcome to 2023. Um, for many of you, the notion of a happy new year may be a little challenging, only because um, we, we know that this year we're going to be on a grief journey, and we may be at different places in our grief journey. So we may be just beginning our grief journey. We may have been in it for a while, but we're just joining this group, and we have some people who are just joining the group. We may have been in it for a while, um, and, and we're continuing our journey, and, and that's right and perfect. And we also have some people who have just today stepped away. And it was so beautiful to hear um, the testimonial around how this journey has supported them to enjoy their holiday in a way that they never have before, to, to step into the next phase of their life. And while this has been the hardest journey that they've had to go, it is the support of the group that has been so beneficial and supportive of it. Um, I am very grateful to the group because the group has collectively decided that we are going to gift this to everybody else in the Healthy Morning Grief community. And so we are going to be recording this. And whereas normally this would be a conversation where people in the group are reacting and responding, this is going to be a bit of a monologue. Um, to all of you who are with me live, I encourage you to keep your cameras on. Uh, the camera will not pick you up. It's only if your mic is on that you would be picked up by the computer. So feel free to leave your cameras on. That way I can see your responses, including I can see your response of, mm -hmm. and then that way <laughs> I'll know that there's a question in there um, and, and I can speak further to whatever I'm talking about. Once we're complete with this, and we'll, we'll end the recording early so that we can have our normal conversation around it. To those who are not with us live, um, of course, you're going to be seeing the recording as well, uh, and, and you won't benefit from the conversation this time. This is a one and done. We're only doing it this once. The reason we're doing it this once is because January is a five-week month. So I thought, well, let's take week number one and open it to the healthy morning community so that you can all see what we do in the HMR program, uh, which I think is pretty special because it's a special way to go through the book and to explore one conversion technique at a time. So we're not taking on our whole grief journey. What we're doing is we're learning how to utilize the tools so that we walk through the grief journey with ease and grace. And that right there gives us hope that we're together in a group gives us hope. And what we need in the grief journey is hope, right? When I was working in hospice, we talked about how um, when you are in an end of life process with a loved one, that hope window seems to close down. You know, we hope that we had a misdiagnosis. We hope that this didn't really happen. We hope that whatever this tragedy was, that it was just a bad dream and hope just closes in on us really quickly. The grief journey is about opening up that window of hope ever so gently, ever so easily. Normally in the first three to six months after a death, we're so much in the business of dealing with the death and just moving forward. And people are saying, are you okay? And we respond with, I'm fine. And we just kind of move through it. But if you're like me, somewhere around the three month mark, for some people it takes longer, um, you kind of hit the wall going 120 miles an hour. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Just kind of nod or raise your hand. Yeah, I'm seeing the nods. Um, that hitting the wall, that, that's a moment of the grief has caught up with us because in the early days, we're dosing. And all that that means is um, our, we couldn't possibly take it all on board at the same time. We, we can't even be thinking about it. But slowly but surely, that, that all stop that happens Sometimes it feels like an all stop. Sometimes it feels like a melt where we're starting to melt into the experience and the awareness of my loved one really is gone. My loved one really is not here. And so um, I just want to be very mindful. I need to bring somebody in, but I need to mute her very quickly. There we go. Um, so just so that you know, we are recording and we will be distributing this recording. So we're going to ask you to keep your mic off for the duration of the recording. 
Um, and we're glad that you're joining us live. Feel free to turn on your camera so that we can see you if that's possible. I know your computer has been a little wonky, so that may not be possible. Um, and we are going to talk once this initial recording is done. It's because January is a five week month and we just want to um, give a gift from the group to everybody in the Healthy Morning community um, of what chapter number one in the book is all about. So what I was talking about is in the early days when we're just dosing and moving forward, and then all of a sudden we either have this melt or we have this running into a wall at 100 miles an hour. Whatever your experience of that is, that's the moment when your grief is asking you to slow down to the pace of your grief. Slowing down to the pace of your grief can feel excruciating. It can feel impossible because in our worlds, we move very quickly. And so having a group like this that supports us once a week in a reminder, and it's not that we need to be slow the entire week. It's about let's use this conversion technique, just this one thing to focus on this week to make it manageable so that we can begin to gently hear our grief whisper to us what it needs us to know. And then we integrate that into our life. And then the journey, the grief journey, doesn't become all-consuming. It becomes a journey that we can do with ease and grace because we get really clear that what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to find where the relationship is now. So we're moving from the love of where the relationship was when we had our beloved physically here with us to where it is now. How do I hear you now? How do I commune with you now in healthy ways? And it's a journey that we do with love. And when we do it with love and when we do it gently and kindly and respectfully, where we're actually respecting our grief and we recognize our grief has information for us and has wisdom for us, when we recognize that, then we're off to the races in a really gentle way. And that's what this group looks to do. So we're going to start week one of January with chapter one in the book. We don't go through the chapter, uh, through the chapters chronologically. So we don't go from one to 52 because we did that the first year. And then I realized that if I were to rewrite the book, um, that, that I would curate the chapters in a different way. So the second year that I did the program, I decided to curate the chapters in a way that makes sense. So January, this is the month of finding the tools, the very basic tools that we need that reinforce us throughout the journey. For those of you who have done this chapter with me before, this is a time where you get to decide whether what you did last time as your symbol for strength is still your symbol for strength, or is there a new symbol for strength, or do you have multiple symbols of strength? For those who have never done this before, this is an invitation to find a key tool that you can lean on throughout your grief journey and to put it in a place where you can see it, where it is visible, where you can touch it. So throughout the month of January, we're going to be exploring what are these key fundamental tools. As we move into February, February becomes looking at the physical symptoms of grief and really exploring what those physical symptoms are. So where are we now? Have we shifted for those who have been with us on the journey for a while? Or are, is there something that we're still needing to play with here? Is there something new that's trying to communicate with us? And every month, it's a different theme in the grief journey. And we walk through it very elegantly and, and very gently. And what people have said to me is how this has made all the difference for how they move forward in their world. And then it's not just about how you move forward in your grief journey. These are tools and skill sets that you then use throughout your life. So I also want to make sure that everybody here on the call is really clear that what we're learning and what we're discovering today is tools that will serve us for the rest of our lives. So are we ready to begin? Thumbs up. Here we go. As always, we've got our little water game. So when I drink water, it is your opportunity to take a deep breath, see if you need some water, see if you need a cup of tea, whatever you've got with you right now. With grief, we tend to suffer from physical dehydration. So we want to make sure that we're constantly replenishing our sources. 
So we are on page number one, chapter number one, symbols, symbol of strength. In paragraph number one, we say, grief is not a problem to be solved. It is a process that we go through. The truth is most people avoid it because it is hard. Grief brings, brings with it a myriad of physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual symptoms. Questions range from the basics of self-care and functioning to existential crises of faith. In this turmoil, we need something to ground into and lean on, something to remind ourselves that we have the strength to walk through the grief process. A symbol of strength can remind us of and connect us to the power we have within. This week, our invitation, and it is always, every week is an invitation. If this feels right for you, you do it. If it doesn't feel right for you yet, it's something you can turn to later on, right? The invitation this week is to begin to connect to the strength that you have inside and to recognize the strength that you have inside that you've already exhibited, okay? And in the Kajabi classroom, again, you will have your workbook homework page. Um, you may have heard me say that this, this year, this is the year that the companion workbook is going to come out. We're actually going to publish it. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull together all of these worksheets. I wanna make sure that everybody in the group is working the worksheets in the week that we're doing it, because that's a way for you to walk with this throughout your week. You can just print off that worksheet and just have it sit on your desk or put it up on your refrigerator. You're gonna put it wherever your eye catches it. You don't have to answer all of the questions right after we do this on day one. And as you all know, well, you don't all know because there are some of you who are new to the group. What happens is this recording goes up in the Kajabi classroom um, at the same time as the worksheet does. The reason is I want you to hear my words speaking this before you look at the sheet. I want you to stay present with what we're talking about here and then let the sheet support you afterwards. So when the video goes up, that's when the worksheet goes up as well. And you'll have access to that um, in the Kajabi classroom. So you're going to use that sheet to explore this question. You know, what is the symbol of strength that can remind us of and connect us to the power we have within? So just for a minute, I'd like you all to take a deep breath and think about strength and power. Where is my strength? Where is my power? Where have I already exhibited it? In the grief journey, or maybe it was in the end of life journey, where you came up with strength that you didn't even know you had. Because this, this week is about honoring the strength that we've already exhibited, and maybe start to pay attention to the symbols. Was there a symbol that occurred during this show of strength? that helped me to anchor in. I remember a client once said to me, you know, all through my husband's illness, I had this keychain. And whenever the doctors would come to talk to me, I would put my hand in my pocket and with my hand, I would feel the object. And the object was a heart. It, it was a heart emblem that was on her keychain. And she would just kind of rub the heart. And somehow that would give her the strength to sit with what the doctor was saying to her. So I asked her, where, where was this heart now? And she said, you know, I, I don't even know. It's not on my keychain anymore. So this week for her became about finding where the heart is. Now, just think about that for a second. I'm going to spend this week looking for my heart of strength. Isn't that beautiful? For my heart of strength. She ended up finding a stone that didn't go on her keychain. It was a little stone that she put in her wallet that she carried everywhere with her. And when she was sitting by her computer, the heart would be right by the computer. So that whenever something came up, whether it was grief related or it was work related or whatever, as a memory of her strength, it became an immediate thing that her eye fell to. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about finding a symbol that will remind you 
of your strength that will reconnect you to your sense of strength inside of you. It's actually a vibrational shift that happens, right? The minute our eye hits that, we're already trained to know that's it. Why are we trained to know that? Because you've done the work this week to identify what is your symbol of strength. And that symbol of strength in PWC plus C and everybody in the group who's been in the group, you know what PWC plus C is. It's all about being present and being willing. That symbol of strength, when your eye falls to it, what happens is you recognize, I need to be present to my strength right now. The, the linking object, or not linking object, the, the symbol of strength that's sitting right in front of you becomes your presencing to your strength. And then you've got a willingness. The question, am I willing to be in my strength with whatever is showing up right now? It doesn't mean I pretend it's not happening. It doesn't mean I pretend I'm not hurt or scared or whatever it is. It means that I'm willing to walk into that with my strength. And it's my strength that's actually helping me to be willing. Is this making sense? Yeah? Okay, excellent. Um, and again, feel free to put thumbs up and stuff that doesn't that doesn't show up for anybody else. It's just a communication to me, but I appreciate all of the nods that that help me to know that what I'm saying is landing. That's great. I'm going to go for water before we go to paragraph number two. I invite you to do the same. Thank you for the thumbs up. That's great. OK, so now we are in paragraph number two. Um, page number one. And, you know, I got this question actually uh, two months ago. So I want to mention this. The reason I keep mentioning what paragraph we're in, what page we're on is because grief brain is funny. Have any, any of you noticed that grief brain is funny where you can really get lost in what we're talking about and not know where we were? This book was written for grief brain. And I want to make sure that I'm honoring that you know, if you're feeling a little lost, if you're feeling a little confused, we keep coming back to the book and I let you know exactly where we are because we want to move gently with this together. So we are in paragraph number two, page number one. One of the things I learned from a native elder many years ago is that the Blackfoot revere the buffalo as the smartest of all animals. Only the buffalo is smart enough to know that when a storm is coming, you turn towards it and walk through it because that is the shortest time spent in the storm. So what do I mean by that? And what did the elder mean by that? Think about a prairie, right? And some of you I know live in the prairie. So I know you know what I'm talking about when I say think about the prairie and the flatland and you have the mountains in the distance, but you've got the flat and buffalo are creatures of the prairie, right? So on the flat land, you see a storm coming a long ways away, right? You, you watch it coming in. Every, every animal, humans included, see the storm come and what do you do? You turn and you run. What the buffalo does is instinctively, as the storm is coming across the prairie, the buffalo turns towards the storm because the buffalo recognizes that walking through the storm is the shortest amount of time in the storm. For a, a human being, and I'm gonna use a human being, but again, for all other animals, when the storm is coming, if you turn to run from the storm, you're gonna spend the most amount of time in the storm because the storm is traveling with you, right? As opposed to look at that, we're clear of the storm. Does that make sense, what I've just said? Okay, so the buffalo is the wisest of all animals because the buffalo, when it sees the storm coming, thanks for the thumbs up on that, when it sees the storm coming, it is moving through the storm. It will turn towards it and lean into it, and it's brilliant. This native elder went on to tell me, creator rewards the buffalo, with a strong tuft of hair on the forehead to protect this wise creature from the storm it faces. So think about a buffalo for a minute. I'm just gonna share my screen so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, there we go. 
Can you see my screen with the two buffaloes there? Excellent, thank you. Okay, so if you can see the screen with the two buffaloes, um, the one is in the storm. Can you see how its head is poised down and in between, um, I guess those are antlers or horns, it, they're horns, um, that's where the tuft of hair is. And we know a buffalo, right? If you look at the profile, you know that big forehead. This is what the elder was talking about. And I love this painting, which I was gifted, because this painting, in the painting, you can see how the storm actually moves around, right? Even the snow that's on the buffalo's head, the buffalo is protected from the cold of that by the hair. The hair caught it, but the buffalo isn't feeling it, right? This is such an important concept when we think about our grief journey, because let's face it, our grief journey isn't one storm, because it's not a one and done. Our grief journey is chaotic and many storms show up on the horizon and we see the storm show up. But what is it that will help us to turn into it so that we spend the least amount of time in it? That's what we're exploring this week. What is it that will help us to when we see it's coming down the pike, just like that heart emblem that I told you about, when we see it coming down the pike, we're going to feel the courage that we need to turn and face it and allow ourselves to walk through it so that we spend the least amount of time in it. Is that resonating? Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so we are halfway through the paragraph on page number one. And as I said, creator rewards the buffalo with a strong tuft of hair on the forehead to protect this wise creature from the storm it faces. So too does the God of our understanding give us the tools we need as we need them. When my mother died, the buffalo became an important symbol for me. I placed a picture of a buffalo where I could see it every day. It was a powerful reminder to face the storms of grief as they appear and to trust the creator would give me what I need to survive. Because again, because the native elders spoke it in that way, I understood not only the wisdom of the creature, but the creature began to mean for me that I would always be given what I need to walk through whatever comes up. And so the painting that I showed you there, this is the very painting. It travels with me. It goes where I go. It's nice and lightweight, right? I also have other pictures that um, I hang on my refrigerator. It, it, for me, is the fundamental reminder. And whenever my eye falls to it, it reminds me, you got this. You got this because you're not walking it alone. And so that reminder that not only do I have this, but I have it because I'm not walking it alone and I'll be given what I need. That's crucial for me as my symbol of strength because it's my reminder that I'm not alone in it. So what is your reminder that you're not alone in this journey? What is the symbol that you maybe then put up all around your house or maybe it's in a keychain and you just have that keychain with you? We want to look for what is the symbol that will remind you of your strength when you need it the most. And we wanna do this now at the beginning of our journey because in the beginning of our journey, that's when um, we're able to gently be reminded of it. You know, It's not when we're in the chaos of the journey. And if right now you are feeling in the chaos of your grief journey, um, then I would simply ask you to remember this isn't you need to do this right here, right now. This is a week. So we're going to meditate with this. We're going to allow the answer to come to us. That's why the work page is so important because the work page will help you to discover what, what is it? What is it that will presence me? What is it that will remind me that it's a question, am I willing? What is it that will give me the courage? Because again, PWC plus C is present, willing, curious, with courage. So this one is really looking to presence you and to remind you of your courage. It's, it's kind of the sandwich one. Is that making sense? Yeah. 
And, and I have a sense that we've got some questions coming up around this. So please just make sure you're writing down your questions so that we, when we stop the video, we can get to the questions. And as always, if there are questions then bigger that's bigger than what we can deal with today, um, what is the third week? Uh, third Thursday is the 19th. On the 19th, we have our Q&A day. And so we'll just load up any questions into the Q&A day if, if it's too big for us to answer today. But we're going to get to as many questions as, as is appropriate for today. Does that feel OK? Feel good? Excellent. OK. So now we're turning to page number two, where we've got the getting started. So the whole book, as you know, is designed to give you a paragraph of what the conversion technique is, a paragraph of my personal experience of the conversion technique, and then the heart points are designed specifically so that you find what is true for you here. You are the expert on your grief journey, not me. You need to find in this conversion technique what is true for you, what will work for you. And so the heart points are just um, a way for you to step into this. So we start with heart point number one. Begin with getting curious. Ask yourself, what is my symbol for strength? How can it help me? through this difficult time. And it's not something that if you don't get the answer right away, then, oh, that didn't work. This is a meditation, right? And again, we're going to take the entire week and we may come up with more than one thing. That's perfect. We begin with getting curious. What is my symbol of strength? How can it help me through this difficult time? And if something's come to you right now, write it down, right? Because we know grief brain, it can come to us and then it can disappear just as quickly, right? We've all had that experience. Am I the only one? <laughs> no, okay, just checking. Hard point number two, find or create a physical reminder of your symbol of strength. So it's one thing to intellectually know the buffalo is my symbol of strength. But I can tell you right here and right now, I'm not thinking buffalo when I'm seeing the storm. There's, there's no part of me, and I've been doing this for years now, there is no part of me that thinks Buffalo when I'm in an anxiety increase because a storm is on the horizon. What helps me to remember to face the storm is normally, if I'm in my office, I do this, and I turn my head. So this is not my office. My office is in another part here. So when I go to my office and I'm sitting at my desk and I do the you better believe it's right there. It's right there where I'm going to see it because that's the moment I need it. So what you need to do is you need to think about where do I need to place this physical reminder? And it's why I have to have a physical reminder because in the moment of the anxiety increase, in the moment of recognizing there's something approaching, and we all know that moment of grief is starting to surface. Because again, for those of you who are new, I want to make sure you all know when we're talking about grief and mourning, we're talking about grief is the internal response to the loss. Mourning is the external expression. The storm that's coming down is we're starting to become aware that something's coming up into our conscious awareness. Our grief is knocking at our door. We think of the grief as the storm. What the grief is doing is it's letting us know that something can be released right now. So we're going to transform the way we think about this as we continue this journey. For right now, we need the, the courage to know that we can allow that grief to come up. We can allow that grief to surface. It's okay. All right. So we find or create a physical reminder of your symbol of strength. Heart point number three, place the symbol somewhere prominent where you will see it throughout your day. That's why I say the refrigerator, because I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite grief avoidant techniques, I see some smiles, so I'm guessing I'm not alone with this. <laughs> yes, I see the laughs too, right? Let's face it, the refrigerator is my friend and my enemy both, right? And so if I'm going to be heading to the freezer for some ice cream, if I'm going to be heading to the fridge for something, if I'm going to be heading to the cupboard for my potato chips, then it's not the refrigerator that needs it, it's the cupboard that needs it, right? And I actually, at one point, some of you have heard me say this before, um, chocolate pudding was, was where I went to after my mother's death, for sure. And I later found out why, and we'll talk about that in, in a later conversion technique. 
But what I realized is I couldn't just have buffaloes on every single cupboard in my kitchen. I suppose I could have, but that would have looked a little silly. And what would happen if I did that is I start to get a blind eye to it. Do you know what I mean by that? If, if you put it everywhere, then suddenly you don't see it at all. You need to put it in strategic places. So what I did was I opened the, the cupboard and it was on the inside of that particular cupboard where the chocolate pudding was, you know, the powder that you make into pudding. Um, I put it on the inside of that cupboard. And all that did was that allowed me to pause for a minute to say, is there a storm that I'm avoiding right now? And that's all I needed. Because there would be moments when I would say, you know what, there is, and I'm making the pudding anyway. There, are, But I would do it consciously. And that's a big difference when you do it consciously. Because then the entire time I'm cooking the pudding, and, and I like the stove top pudding, just saying. Um, so the entire time that I would do that, I'd be sitting with the question, so what will help me in this storm? What's the storm about? And sometimes I'd cook the pudding, but I wouldn't eat the pudding. That's that's the power of consciousness. Sometimes I would eat the pudding, but I'd eat the pudding consciously. And sometimes I would see the buffalo and I'd close the, the cupboard and I'd open my journal. I'd find a different tool that would help me work through it. This is about getting conscious and making conscious choice and being really curious about what's really going on. Okay. Part point number four, share the symbol and the story of why it gives you strength with someone you trust. Why is it important to share it, to actually say it out loud? Because when we say it out loud, then first of all, somebody else knows. So somebody else, when I share that the buffalo is, is my strength, if I'm sharing with somebody who I trust, um, then when I'm saying I'm, I'm going through a rough time right now and I feel myself avoiding it, that person that I shared it with can actually say, what would the buffalo do right now? Very gently, very lovingly. You have to make sure you're telling the right person, right? But we do want to share that. So um, the subcategory under this one starts with, there is power in sharing your story with someone else. As you speak to another person about your power symbol, you hear yourself speak. You learn from what you say, and the symbol becomes more meaningful and personal. You see, it wasn't until I wrote about the buffalo, it wasn't until I started talking about the buffalo, that I realized everything that the buffalo means to me. If it's a heart, if it's a... Um, a bunny, I, I'm just thinking about the Energizer bunny because that was it for somebody else, right? If it's if it's the Energizer buddy, bunny, it's one thing to have that as your symbol. It's a completely different thing to talk about why it's your symbol because that's what anchors it as your symbol. Now you know what it means. So when you open up the cupboard and you see that picture, you can't deny what it means because you've spoken about it. You've made it part of your conscious awareness, okay? Heart point number two under this fourth heart, your supportive friends may also have thoughts to share that will give you a greater perspective and appreciation of the benefits of your symbol. So when a friend starts to talk to you about a symbol, um, there was a woman who had a flower and for her, it became about a flower that that she needed pictures of a particular kind of flower. I don't remember what kind of flower it was, but it was a particular kind of flower. What I do remember is that when she shared that with a friend, a friend said, didn't you tell me that that was the first flower your husband ever gave you? She had no conscious awareness of it, but suddenly, oh, this, this flower actually starts building my relationship with my husband wherever he is now. So what she did was she made sure she had at least one of that flower, a live flower, at her desk, at her di dinner table every single day. And it was a reminder that I can connect with you. That's the beginning of building where the relationship is now. Okay. And that's the benefit of a friend reflecting on what you're saying, because she brought something to her awareness that she didn't have conscious awareness of. It was happening because of that but she didn't have conscious awareness of it until the friend pointed it out. By asking a friend, I, I'm in heart point number three now, 
By asking a friend to listen, you give them the opportunity to help. In times of grief, friends often feel helpless. They don't know what to say or do. By asking them to listen to and validate what you are saying, you communicate that you trust them. That trust is a priceless gift. Now, I just want to be really clear that that trust is a trust that you need to know you've got there. You can't just extend this trust to somebody who's not trustworthy, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to decide, and we're going to talk in this month, in fact, about your wellness team and how do you vet that. And, and there may be people who, who you do trust, um, uh, but, but it's not quite right. So we're going to talk about that. Next week is linking objects. And then by the third week, we're going to revisit our wellness team and, and look at so, so that trust piece at, a, at an even deeper level. But here's the thing for this week. What is the thing that when your eyes fall on it, you feel a little buoyed? You feel a little reassurance. You feel like I can breathe now because that's what we're wanting to do. That symbol of strength will give you that moment of breath that allows you to consciously choose. And it's the beginning of us really delving into the deeper levels of grief. For those of you who have been doing this a while, for those of you who already know what your symbols are, I want you to vet your symbol again. Have you now turned a blind eye to it? Have you seen it there so much that it doesn't hold the meaning for you anymore? Because, you know, I do still have this buffalo in my office. I don't have it in my cupboards anymore because that was really important at that time. But that's not what I need in my cupboards anymore. That's not what's going to do it for me anymore. Right. So. Sometimes we need to refresh our symbols of strength and we need to ask ourselves, is there another symbol of strength that's wanting to come forward for us right now for, for our moment in the journey now? And it's okay to refresh. For some of us, we have symbols of strength on our altars and we're going to talk about our altars. I think that comes up next month or the month after. Um, when we talk about altars, altars are living things that get refreshed. So we want to make sure that whatever our symbol of strength is, that we look at our altar as well. And does that need a little bit of a refresh with our new symbol of strength? So what we're going to do is we're going to continue this conversation. I'm going to stop the recording shortly here. For those of you who are seeing this recording and have never been part, part of the HMR program or have never even thought to be part of the HMR program, if this speaks to you, if this is the kind of journey that would work for you, then we invite you to join us. We're a pretty friendly group. And if you're saying, I wish I had somebody that I could trust, but there is really nobody in my life. And I thoroughly appreciate that there are some of you who you have nobody that you feel you can trust. This is a group you can trust. And we do the validation for each other. So I invite you to step on in um, and give me a call if you want to talk more about it. I'm going to stop this video now. Thank you all for uh, being with us. And for those of you who are in the group and who are seeing the video, if you've got questions about what we talk about afterwards, please just shoot me an email. Or if you're watching the video and you've got some stuff coming up, as always, send me your questions because we're going to load them into the Q&A. Much love to you. Happy 2023. Um, for those of you in the group, we'll see you next week. For those of you on your journey, ease and grace in your journey. And for those of you live with me, hang on two seconds while I stop the recording. Namaste.